Bitcoin to the moon or not? Is this the beginning of the end for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies? Is Elon Musk the crypto god, hero, or killer? I'll answer some of these questions in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad happening three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking like everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Sapala here. Hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And wow, what a new cycle it has been for Bitcoin the last 48 hours. If you're not too familiar with what's going on, I don't blame you. The news about Bitcoin is as volatile as Bitcoin itself. So either way, coming around here, let me show you some things and uh, I've kind of assembled some things here, some websites that will discuss uh, some of the craziness of this news cycle of Bitcoin the last 48 hours. You know, Musk, uh, Musk concerns about Bitcoin's energy consumption are misguided. Uh, people are thinking that uh, the cost of mining uh, Bitcoin is becoming more and more um, expensive and the effects to the environment are getting higher and higher. Bitcoin falls 7% to China reported banks, bans banks from cryptocurrency business. Uh, China bans financial payment institution from cryptocurrency business. You know, even uh, uh, back to Elon Musk, uh, they are no longer taking Bitcoin as a form of payment any longer. Uh, IRS is coming for you for crypto investors who haven't paid their taxes because they treat not this as currency, but as property. So some of you guys are looking at uh, uh, capital gains tax, either short-term or long-term capital gains tax. Short-term tax is ordinary income. Long-term is your normal uh, capital gains, long-term capital gains rate. The fear and greed index. So people are looking at cryptocurrency and a combination of this fear index is a combination of volatility, market momentum and volume, social media, surveys, dominance, um, that resemble the market cap share of the whole crypto market uh, and trends. So the emotion behind money is the highest when it comes to cryptocurrency, when it comes to Bitcoin. Uh, another news uh, article here, um, uh, again, back to the mining and energy consumption of mining Bitcoin and, and Bitcoin here talking about uh, Coindesk questions where the Bitcoin mining needs to consume as much energy as it generally does because it requires a lot of energy to mine Bitcoin. Again, if Bitcoin were a country, is a proof of work chain with full, fairly transparent energy use because there's only a single step between power input and Bitcoin output. So Coindesk emphasized that Bitcoin isn't a country, adding that comparing its power consumption to that of country doesn't accomplish much more than understanding how much it consumes. But uh, of the nations with mining operation, Bitcoin makes up no more than 1.29% of any one country's total power consumption. So you know, I'm just curious, how much does it take to make dollar bills? How much does it take to make a penny? Do you realize it takes two cents to make a penny? But does it impact the environment as much as Bitcoin? And that's the argument right now. It's, it's being posed that the mining of Bitcoin is actually potentially affecting the environment. And last but not least, I can always tell something scammy about a potential opportunity by how it's marketed or the marketing necessary to get me to be a potential investor in a product or service. So for example, Elon Musk impersonators has stolen more than $2 million in cryptocurrency since October by impersonating fake accounts. And by the way, maybe we need to put up some of the accounts that I've been impersonating. By the way, I'm nobody. I'm not an Elon Musk. I don't have hundreds and hundreds of thousands and thousands and millions of followers on YouTube or, or Instagram or Facebook. I'm nobody. And even guys like me and my colleagues that are in the same industry as me that have also their building profiles and they're building their Instagram handles and, and profiles. They're getting, what do you call that, fake accounts? And by the way, if any of you come to my YouTube channel, there's a fake seven-figure squad that goes under all the posts posing as me, posing as my staff. But by the way, please help me out because as soon as we cross 100,000 subs, we get to authenticate and get a check mark next to our YouTube page name on YouTube. So please help us. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our YouTube page so we can see the impersonators of the seven-figure squad 
versus the real account, which is ours, because we'll have an authenticated check mark once you cross 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. But even on Instagram, I got people taking my handle, money smart guy, or money smart dot guy, or underscore money smart guy underscore, as fake profiles trying to scam people to buy cryptocurrency. And just wanna let you know, I'll never ask you for money in your DMs. If you wanna do business with me, boom, Zoom. If you wanna do business with me, boom, face to face. Wanna do business with me, boom, phone calls. You've seen them on my Instagram stories. So back to this whole cryptocurrency thing, up and down, up and down. Here's my thing with cryptocurrency. And I don't wanna sound like an old guy. I think when the Elon, uh, not Elon Musk, when uh, Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett were asked about cryptocurrency, they sound like a bunch of old guys that's made it already, the, the, the hunger as a lion in the investment space is no longer there, possibly. That they're no longer as competitive, possibly. That they don't wanna even mess with Bitcoin, they don't wanna mess with cryptocurrency. I'll tell you this, I believe that there's a space for it. I believe that there is a future for it. But I've seen 22 years of me being in business, me being in the insurance industry. I've seen this in 01, I've seen this 08, 09, I've seen this now with Bitcoin. There's always gonna be some thing, some shiny object in that generation that's gonna cause people to go nuts to go crazy with their money, with their finances, with their investments. They put their life savings, they put their career, they put their jobs on the line without looking into the matter, without researching it through and through, in and out. They don't research, they just say, oh, oh, I'm just missing out. And that's as much research as they do. I'm missing out, the FOMO kicking in, the fear of missing out is kicking in. But I do think there's gonna be a space for cryptocurrency. I do think there's gonna be a opportunity for, matter of fact, I like it. I, I like the blockchain. I like the fact that you can go on your app and transact uh, uh, um, things of value. I do that right now. How many, how many apps do you have on your phone to send money? Cash app, Apple Pay, PayPal, multiple things, right? Venmo, Zelle, so many different ways. I'm a, I'm a sponsored guy for Zoom, X-O-O-M, to help send money overseas internationally, which is a segment that we did for the Filipino channel. They wanted to sponsor one of my uh, segments to talk about the importance of having technology to send money over to loved ones overseas using a technology called Zoom. When we're looking at cryptocurrency and I see the adoption, I see it, I see it fighting through, I see it wanting to get birth, I see it wanting to be adopted, and I see a lot of very, very, very wealthy people putting their money into it and people saying, wow, they're putting billions of dollars into it. Listen guys, Tesla, trillion dollar company, Elon Musk trickles in $1.5 billion. Now to you, me and you, that's a lot of money. A billion, man, that's a lot of money, vast amount of money, $1.5 billion. It's a lot of money. That's 1,500 millions, <laughs> a lot of money. But when you're looking at the percentage of what Elon Musk and his companies are worth, it's 1%. It's one percent. It's like it's like it's like you having a a thousand dollars, right? And you say, okay, man, here's here's a hundred bucks, okay? Here, here here's you, you have a you have a hundred dollars. Say, bro, here's a dollar. Really? Is that as much skin in the game as you believe in it? Well, that's the amount of Bitcoin. Now, some people have put their whole lives into it. I think the uh, uh, the, the twins, uh, the Winklevoss twins, who settled out with. Mark Zuckerberg, they're all into it. I mean, some of you might be saying, well, you know, Matt, you know, if they're putting life and limb and their money into it, I should be into it as well. Listen, a lot of these guys have backup plans. A lot of these guys have wealthy families. A lot of these guys have trust funds. A lot of these guys have relationships far and, far and few between many of you that watch my channel on YouTube, which are aspiring millionaires, aspiring entrepreneurs, aspiring faith-based believers that want to go about things in a godly, faithful manner, jumping on the next craze because everybody in a church is doing it is not the right way to go about doing things. You have been charged to be a steward of your finances. You've been charged as a steward to be watchful and mindful of the blessings and the money and the talents given to you. So you have to be very careful in how you spend it, how you earn it, how you spend it, how you invest it, or you keep it how you grow it. You have to be mindful about all those things. And, and I remember getting caught up 
in a conversation about real estate in uh, 07, 08. And this, re- this kind of reminds me, the crypto craze is kind of reminding me of that, but I felt like I was missing out. Everybody's driving up and down the block, looking at property, looking at real estate like a big timer. How come I'm not doing it? I'm in the insurance business. I, I need to be doing this too as well. And I, I got caught up thinking about what other people were doing. I got caught up in what other people were making instead of saying, okay, Lord, this is my talent. This is my lane. Is that something you want? Do, are you discerning? Okay, let me expand my territory. Let me expand my knowledge. Let me look into the matter. Research it. Understand it. How much money of that are you willing to lose? People ask me often, say, by the way, I'm saying this not as a financial advisor because that's not what I am. This is a conversation with you and I as friends. Somebody says, hey, man, how much money should you put inside, inside cryptocurrency and Bitcoin? I say, hey, money that you're willing to lose. And quite frankly, I'm not willing to lose. Matt, do you like to gamble? Yes, I like to gamble when I know the odds and more importantly, I control the odds. So when you think, look at things like Bitcoin and look at things how people are trying to get tricked into buying cryptocurrency. And by the way, how many times have you seen scams and people getting tricked online to buy life insurance? Zero. How many scams have you seen online of people getting tricked to buy real estate? Zero. How many times have you seen online people getting tricked to buy bank accounts? Or, 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 and by the way, you sniff those out. A Nigerian bank account? It's obvious. But when you got to look at cryptocurrency where it's at, some, some questions here I want to pose here. Something we need to process together. Is this the beginning and end for Bitcoin? Will it ever see the heights it did earlier this year? You got ashes of that. Will it come back again? So let's take a look at this. Right now, cryptocurrency is at, 39, is at 39,000 down from a high of $41. If I go back a week, earlier this week, it was, it was a high of $49, went as high as $51. If I go back a month, you see this downtrend here. Okay, however deceptive, because oh, it's time to bail out Bitcoin. But if you look back over a year, look at this. So this is something to be considering too as well. Is this learning how to correct this? Is it learning how to create valuation? And by the way, here, here's my feelings about, here's my feelings about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space. I'm seeing now the IRS starting to clamp down on you now having to pay taxes on cryptocurrency. Ripple right now, Ripple is right now in a lawsuit with the SEC. They're trying to regulate this with the Securities and Exchange Commission. They're trying to deem this as a security. It's a lawsuit that's happening right now. And by the way, everybody in the crypto space, you know, everybody's fighting for, even though the competitors, you know who they're rooting for? They're rooting for Ripple to win it. Because if the SEC wins, guess what? Guess who's next? Guess who's next? Guess who's getting a lawsuit? And your buddy there, President Joe Biden, guess what he just did with the IRS? He increased funding to this infrastructure bill. He increased major funding to expand the collections and to be able to get money from people through enforcement through the IRS. So yes, the IRS will be expanded to collect more money from its citizens and probably one of those divisions will be looking into the cryptocurrency space. And so what is the future? A couple questions here. We've seen India and now China begin to regulate and even ban cryptocurrency. Is the US next? What do you think? Drop it in the comment section below. What would happen to Bitcoin if the U.S. begins to regulate it? That's another big question. If they regulate it as a security, taxes, they want to see a little bit more exposure of what's being traded on the blockchain. They want to see and, and, and see what is going on. They want to pop open the hood even some more. They want to see how this thing is really constructed. Who is Shataki Nakamoto? Right? All these different things, once the U.S. decide, will that happen? We don't know. It's a question you got to ask. Love to know your feedback in the comment section below. Should Bitcoin be taxed as more normally as we have stocks, bonds, mutual funds? And you're seeing that right now. The IRS is coming after Bitcoin and cryptocurrency taxation. Why? You should buy Bitcoin right now. Should you do it? Is it an opportunity? I remember when I was leaving the, the Persian Gulf War, leaving the Middle East, and everybody's talking about, hey, Matt, you're in the military. You served overseas. You fought for uh, 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 Uncle Sam in the Middle East. Buy some Iraqi denarii. I called it monopoly money. Man, my, my fellow Marines, my, uh, my buddies in the, uh, in the mortgage business, loan business, they were buying 
suitcases filled with currency of Iraqi denarii. Because the stock market is going to scream. If the stock market is going to turn back over again, things are in infrastructures in place. And guess what happened to Iraqi denarii? 25 years later, it's still sitting in the suitcases worth not much, not much of anything. And so what would happen if you bought Bitcoin at the wrong time? Are you willing to hold on to it for the long term? Should Elon Musk be allowed to have this much influence over crypto? Is he a god of crypto? Is he a hero of crypto? Or is he just a cowboy? And uh, by the way, kudos to Elon Musk. He doesn't care what anybody says. He's doing his thing. He's that crazy CEO. Uh, my friend, uh, business partner, Jose Gaetan, loves the crap out of Elon Musk. But should he be allowed to have this much influence to manipulate a market and make a market simply by tweeting or going on Saturday Night Live and making joke about his side hustle, which cost a lot of people. I would put, put a graphic here about how people looked upon Elon Musk for their future savings and lost their life savings because they're basing their investment decision based on a tweet from Elon Musk. Is China wrong for stopping banks from offering Bitcoin products? See, there's a lot of questions here to, uh, to, to pose. And one last thing I want to share with you guys before I let you go. Okay, this is, this is the uh, investmentillustrated.com uh, visual that I use uh, just to help me center on the big picture. Now, I got invo involved in finances here in, in 1999, but I'm looking back on when I was born in the 70s. There's an oil crisis. Are you and I, this, there's an oil crisis. Are you and I seeing an oil crisis right now with the highest, high amounts of gas? The first index fund was created here in the, uh, in the 70s. First index fund launched. Inflation is at all time. I everybody's talking about 4% inflation rate. It used to be at 14.8% back in the late 70s, early 80s. And then here, when I got involved in finance, when I got involved in my own career, my first start in my career, the first 10 years of my career as an insurance agent, helping people with their personal finances was during the lost decade from 2000 to 2010, which really affects a lot of millennials because you were birthed and were teenagers and young adults during an era where they considered the lost decade because money didn't grow, as you see in this chart, during the 2000s. Now, the generation after that, the Gen Zs, you have a screaming stock market after 2010, after 2011. There's, um, listen, here's my, model, here's my bottom line. If you really want to make an investment, the best investment in my 22 years has been one thing. Myself, the best investment is in yourself. That's why I ask these questions. That's why you need to learn how to ask questions. So therefore, by asking questions, you're actually investing in you to grow your thoughts, to grow your knowledge, and start surrounding yourself with people that know a little bit more about these subject matters than you. Of course I'm having conversations with people in crypto. Of course I'm having people, a conversation with people in real estate and insurance. Of course I have a conversation with people that understand investments. That's why I'm able to do all these things I'm doing today in business without a college degree, sales or business background or finance background, because I'm able to self taught self teach myself a lot of these things and so can you so my recommendation to you my hope for you is that you grow yourself you invest in you to increase your earning power increase your earning power keep your expenses low don't live too much on your er higher earnings as you make them keep your expenses low have all this net cash and capital is just that cash and capital to start another business or a business or put into your investments because there's no way you're going to say, you know, I'm going to blink my eyes, blink my eyes, I'm going to be a millionaire with crypto. Blink my eyes, blink my eyes, I'm, 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 be, I'm going to go from broke to becoming a multi, multi, multi millionaire with crypto or Bitcoin. Now, it might happen and prove me wrong, but I'm not bidding my emotion, my energy, the couple thousand dollars I did have when I first started my business, about $500 I had when I First put that into insurance license, the other $1,500 I put for an apartment and place to live for my three kids. I'm not willing to bet the, th the money I don't have into things that aren't predictable. As I said earlier, I like gambling if I know the odds and I control the odds. What do you think? Drop them in the comment section below. Before I let you go, please check out this video here called, Is Bitcoin Biblical?
check out how Bitcoin is perceived from a biblical perspective. And number two, my reaction to the U.S. dollar crashing after four, six trillion dollars of money has just been infused into our economy or last 12, 14 months. That being said, guys, I love to know your thoughts, your comments, your follows, your feedbacks. Put them in the comment section below. Am I right? Am I wrong? Am I full of it? I want to know. What do you think? Put them in the comment section below as we're all learning together to think like a millionaire, to strategize like a millionaire. So therefore you become a first generation cash flow millionaire. That being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.